This episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Far Wide app, outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. Last week, we brought you part one of a two-part series, Hunting for Tule Elk and Black-Tailed Deer in California, where I had met up with Steve's Outdoor Adventures client, Mark Carter. He had shot a Boone and Crockett record book black buck just before we arrived, and over the course of the next five days, we called in a lot of smaller bulls and spotted several black-tailed deer. but only managed to fill our wild pig tags before the massive Northern California wildfires closed in on the ranch and the nearby small town of Willets. The dense smoke made it hard to breathe and shut down animal activity and limited visibility. And just before the wildfires forced the evacuation of everyone in the Willets area, we decided that it was best to head home for a few weeks. And it wasn't long before we returned to mid-September. And while the fires were still burning, they no longer threatened the ranch, and the winds had blown the smoke east and out of the canyons and valleys where we would be hunting. Pacific blacktail deer and tule elk have overlapping ranges in this area of California. And blacktail are found from coastal British Columbia all the way down to central California. I doubt that there's anywhere with hunting that's even close to the quality of hunting in Mendocino County. There are three categories or subspecies of elk recognized by the Boone and Crockett Club. American elk, better known as Rocky Mountain elk, the Roosevelt's elk, and Thule elk. Thule elk are the smallest of the three subspecies and are located exclusively in the central coastline region of California. And while there are some limited drawing opportunities for Thule elk tags, the most common way to hunt them is on a private ranch enrolled in the PLM program that gets a limited number of tags each year, valid only for that property and for the owners to issue to their guests. Given the extremely limited number of Thule elk tags available every year, it's a privilege to get to hunt one, and I know that our client Mark Carter is gonna make the most of this awesome hunt, and I'm hoping that we can get Mark tagged out on a nice bull and still have a few days left over so I can try and fill my deer tag before heading home is, you know, life is so busy. The last thing I want to do is worry about checking out 15 different outfitters, narrowing things down and go, right now I can just make a phone call, tell you what I would like, you know, what we need, you know, you get to know each other, the date, you know, okay, I'd like to do this in 2022, and then I'm done. You know, I, I don't have to do anything else. I don't have to worry what camp's gonna be like when I get there. I know it's gonna be good. I know we're gonna have fun. You know, we can't control weather, we can't control those things, but we're gonna have a good time. And, um, you know, outfitters can tell you whatever they wanna tell. We've all had the experience where we've been to places that we show up, the camp's not what it said. You know, I've been to places where there's not been food. Uh, it's been, uh, you know, just, it's a horrible to get through the week and that experience, and that's not where hunting's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a, a vacation, a relaxing time, a memorable time, and the only way to do that is relieve the stress, and if you don't have the stress of trying to find out where you're gonna go and what you're gonna do, it makes it so much more enjoyable. It's important to note that in California, all hunting ammo must be lead free. This was taken into account when we set up the rifles for this hunt. Mark is hunting with my personal Bergara Premier Series Highlander, chambered in the powerful and accurate new 300 PRC caliber. The rifle is topped with the all-new Burris Eliminator 4 laser scope and shooting 200 grain, lead-free and California legal Barnes LRX bullets, hand-loaded by Pendleton Ammunition. I have personally proofed this combination of rifle, scope, and ammo out to 1,000 yards, and it's the perfect combination for Western big game hunting. This segment of Checking Zero is sponsored by the Adventure Armory, rifle, scope, and ammo packages for hunters. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Pendleton Ammunition, loading bullets one round at a time. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Bergara Rifles, a passion for precision. Every barrel, 
every rifle. This time, things would be a little different. Dylan had headed back to New Mexico to guide his elk hunters, and that meant that we would have the entire ranch to ourselves. Just Mark, myself, and the ranch owner, Ed Mitchell. And as we headed out into the pre-dawn fog, we immediately spotted a nice six by six bull within a few hundred yards of the lodge. He was a great bull, and honestly, he was plenty big enough, but it wouldn't have been much of a hunt. So we passed on him and headed out. A short while later, I was able to get a reply from a bull that was already deep in the oaks and headed to his bedding area, likely with a harem of cows. Hey, he's in the back back there somewhere. And as I was giving up on him, I got a response from another bull, so we scrambled to get set up. Oh, shoot, this is a different bull. It was another small bull, so we passed. But with what we assumed was a herd bull bugling back in the oaks, we knew that we had a place to set up for the evening hunt if nothing else panned out. We continued to hit all of the hot spots on the ranch where the elk like to hang out. We were running into elk, getting responses to bugles, and basically just seeing them everywhere. Elk were on the move, and that was a good sign. He's not that old. He's gonna be heavy. Yeah. He is heavy. He's got good age on him. Yeah. Look at something else, Ed. Look how narrow his pedicles are on his skull. This is it. I mean. Yeah, yeah. have you got a good look at him yet? Oh, yeah. How big is he? Plenty big. Huh? Yeah. That's how that look is like, just don't ask. Yeah, we'll shoot him. You shoot him on it. Right. All right. He's over three. Oh, wow. Well, nice. Well, in that case, let's go get a look at him. Tule elk are vocal, and they're a lot of fun to call. Our plan was to hit as many spots as possible and do several calling sequences in hopes of pulling a herd bull away from his cows, out of cover, and into the open where we could get a shot at him. After failing to raise a bugle during our last mid-morning set, we hiked off the hill and went back to the lodge for some lunch, hopeful that we would have a more productive evening hunt. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Burris Optics. Find what matters. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Marathon Seat Covers. We've got you covered. That afternoon, we hunted a series of meadows that were surrounded by dense stands 
of old growth red fir and oak trees. With early fall midday temperatures in the high 80s, these stands of trees are perfect shade for the elk to bed in. And on most days, the elk will feed out into the meadows once temperatures drop in the evenings. One of our favorite spots is an old GM truck. But after failing to raise a single bugle in the area, we moved on to another meadow complex where we spent a few hours working the calling sequences and hunting our way through to the other side where Ed would pick yeah, us up. It was another uneventful hunt until this spike came out and to the calling. He might be telling us what's coming. He's literally following our trail. He's, he's like, this is the funniest smell elk of all time. We played with him for a short while in hopes of more elk feeding out behind him. But once we realized that he was alone, it was time to stop the fun and get on with the hunt. Something I noticed that evening was that the wind had changed direction and the smoke was starting to filter back into the area from the nearby fires. And this gave me a renewed sense of urgency because not only had the wind changed direction, but temperatures were also forecast to start rising again. We just parked here to glass this meadow. We heard a bull bugle up here on top of the hill. Another one just bugled behind us over here. You can't see him yet. I try to chirp them out in the open. Just try and do cow calls, get some action going here. Get them out where we can get a look. The wind is horrible for this one. And as the sun started to set, Ed took us to one final location to try one final calling sequence for the day. And sure enough, I got a response and he was coming fast. Mark and I moved down the hillside to take cover along the fence line under an oak tree. I couldn't see the bull, but I could hear his bugles getting closer and closer. And then there he was. He's a six on his left. Wait, we'll call him all the way out. Come barreling right through us. Hung up about 150 yards. Um, just wasn't quite convinced. Uh, Steve hit some cow calls. It, it, he was interested, but when he hit the bugle, he was ready to fight. He's happy too. At under 200 yards, the Eliminator 4 was overkill, and Mark waited for the perfect broadside shot. That's a solid bull, bud. Ah. 
Good job, bud. All right. <laughs> yeah. Anytime. That's awesome. He looked just like that one from the front meadow this morning, but I had no cows. So when he came out and I saw all the long points, like he's real symmetrical all the way around. Like he's clean. Yeah, he's a pretty. good, clean bull. Nice six, just solid. <laughs> Think about this. The question I kept asking myself was, on the last day of the first trip, would we have shot that bull? Oh yeah. <laughs> they get me every time this was a magnificent bull and a great tule elk by anyone's standards and with this hunt in the books mark was two animals closer to his quest to take all 29 species of north american big game and i know that before the end of the year he will be even closer and i had a feeling that if the weather forecast stayed true and the wind kept the smoke out of our area, that I would have a chance to be successful. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Far Wide app. Outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. This segment is sponsored by Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammunition packages shipped ready to shoot. If you'd like to book this week's adventure for yourself, give our office a call. We will gladly take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. With Mark tagged out on a great Thule elk, I had a day to try and fill my own deer tag before I had to hit the road for home. As we got to the top of the mountain, a smoky haze coated the incredible sunrise. Our first plan was to sneak into a place where we'd seen an incredible buck on our first trip to the ranch. He hadn't been seen recently, but we knew that he was living in the area and our hope was to catch him in the open and get a shot. Plan B was to start cruising from ridge top to ridge top, glassing large expanses of open country, looking at the open dry grassy slopes where the bucks would be feeding. Our hope, once again, was to catch a big deer in the open before he made his way to a bedding area. We made a hunt down this drainage to the pond, looked into these breaks here, saw one little doe back over there, one cow elk, a couple cow elk over here, but no deer. Our ride just picked, rolled up here to get us. Huh. Go check another set of breaks. Not much moving this morning. While we spotted several deer and a fleeting glimpse at what appeared to be a good buck, it wasn't until the last stop where we parked to glass a series of open grassy ridges that we spotted what looked to be an incredible buck. Yeah, he's the only one there. I'm gonna torch him. Oh, nice buck. All right, you ready?
<laughs> Woo! <laughs> Six hundred on the money. This deer is the perfect example of how powerful the rangefinder and the new Eliminator Four scope really is. This was a small, poorly reflective target, but the scope gave me a range of six hundred yards and a lit aiming point. After weeks of practice at the range with this rifle, I knew that the dot was true. I knew that all I had to do was elevate the lit aiming point to the buck's vitals and squeeze the trigger. I cannot imagine a better way to have ended this hunt. Mark was on his way home with buck and bull tags filled, and I knelt next to an incredible blacktail buck of my own and soaked up the experience. I reflected back on the memories of a tremendous hunt and shared that time with a new friend who I know will show our clients the same incredible experience. And I hope that everyone gets to experience the same incredible hunt in Northern California. In fact, if you'd like to book this hunt for yourself or any other big game hunting or fishing adventure, give our office a call. We're always available to take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. But please remember to join us again next week when we bring you another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventure.